welcome to this week's episode of The Stew. That's spicing things up, by the way. <laughs> I am your host, Brendan Merkel, and I'm here today with Jacob. Jacob, how are you doing? Um, so I tested positive for COVID a week ago. I thought that'd be pretty newsworthy to share. Um, I'm doing completely fine. I'm asymptomatic, but it's everything around it that is just driving me bonkers, dude. Like, I haven't left my home in seven days. That's the responsible thing to do. Yeah. Do you remember in, uh, like, The Shining, how he just goes, like, insane for just being, like, in the hotel, like, the entire winter? Yeah, and then he tries to murder his whole family. Yeah, well, all isolation and no human interaction makes Jacob a cranky bitch, so. (laughs) Well, hopefully, uh, you know, you start feeling better soon, and uh, now now we have two two hosts on here that have once tested positive. I, I had it back in June, and I'll tell you what, I I wasn't asymptomatic. I was hit pretty hard by it. So, yeah. hey, we're we're part of the the numbers now. We're statistics. So <laughs> that was, you know what, when I was a little kid, I just, my life dream was to be a statistic, man. You know what I mean? But hey, at least <laughs> on the bright side, uh, you and I can like just interact with people now. I mean, also like wear our masks and stuff because, you know, like most companies need you to, but at, well, least, yeah. at least you won't give it to anyone or like get it anymore. Yeah, I mean, I had it a while ago, so I don't know. Um, I don't know how this thing runs, so I'm still being careful, you know. Oh, dude, you're screwed. Oh, hey, I just want to mention to everyone listening. Uh, Brennan got a new haircut recently, and it looks really good. Yeah, yeah. I and just, I up. actually got one like two hours ago. Yeah, so. it's looking fresh, dude. I didn't. Um, I, appreciate I, it. I personally look like I've given up on life because I, like I said, I haven't left my apartment in seven days, and I'm going insane. Hey, dude, that just means uh, you'll have to bounce back, right? You'll have to glow up. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's, um, I've actually been doing a lot of projects since I've been in here, though. So, good. for instance, I... Um, building furniture? I've not been burning, like, or building furniture. Burning furniture, that's funny. No, but I, um, I'm actually in the process of uh, putting up some LED string lights in my bedroom because I, I want to look like a sophomore in college again. You got the gamer set up? Uh, not exactly just because, you know, I'm a console guy, but I've also been working on not like pretty much just vocally threatening children on COD. Cause I've been playing yeah, boatloads of that. Yeah. You gotta, gotta hold back sometimes in uh, those COD lobbies, right? Yeah, no, it's, you know what? Our generation, we're hard because of how much of that we like played growing up. You know, being oh, yeah. in the lobbies, you know, because we're playing guys like twice our age and like three times our age, and they love just bullying kids. I don't know what yeah. it is about like just like Xbox Live and like PlayStation people just bullying children. But- yeah, well, our video game generation has gone from, you know, when we were kids, we would be playing against these guys like when I was like 10, 11, 13, like that age range. You'd be playing guys our age now that are like 21 who would just be so much better at the game than you. We're like now... I'm playing against these kids that are just amazing at this, at these games. And I'm just getting like constantly shit on. So it's interesting to see how video games have, you know, the dusty ass sweats that don't shower. Exactly. We're dog water. Apparently that's the, that's the new term what the kids are saying. Dog water. Yeah. Is that bad? That's bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I guess. (laughs) All right. You know what? Let's just own it though. That's all we got to do. All right. But I also, um, in my quarantine, I watched Tenet for the first time the other night, and I'm still processing it, dude. I had, uh, I had a, it felt like I was hungover all day yesterday just from watching that movie. Cause one, I watched it super late at night, and I'm like, I'm not gonna fall asleep during this. Cause literally, that's, that's one of the movies where if you miss a minute, you have to like rewind it because if you're not like constantly focused on it, you're not gonna understand what at all is going on. It, imagine Interstellar, so it's a Christopher Nolan movie which yep. are always fantastic. Great cinematography, great sound. But imagine Interstellar and Inception on crack. Yeah. That's, that's what this movie I was. can't even imagine it. I would ask you to give me a little rundown, but the last time uh gave me a rundown of a movie, it was that, I think, Kurt Russell Santa movie, and that took like three minutes. So I don't even want you to attempt to try and... I can make a whole episode out of that. Yeah, so I, we definitely do not have the time for that. And yeah, guys, think, I'm making uh, a spinoff show where I just talk about Christopher Nolan movies. <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding but yeah dude i'm still processing it's just it's so good it's uh it's on amazon if you guys want to run it like it's it's definitely worth a watch i will say that yeah i haven't seen it yet so i'll have to check it out so then we can you know gossip about it yeah know, yeah you know what? we can just tweet about it and no one else will get it 
Yeah, exactly. We're going to be the tennis club. All right, let's get to some football, Brennan. Let's do we it. Had, uh, we had a pretty disappointing divisional round this weekend, wouldn't you say? It, it, there, were some, there were some stinkers, that's for sure. I, Ooh, a lot stinkers. of Stinkers. Uh, yep, they, they, st- they stunk, I'll, I'll admit it. There was not too many close games. Too so, many uh, close games? What are you talking about? The well, Chiefs and the Browns? And... Yeah, we'll get to that, but it didn't feel like a lot of them were close. Oh, okay. So, you know what? I think I'm, I'm picking up what you mean here. Yeah, so what he's let's start with the Rams Packers game. That was the first game of the of the weekend. Yeah. What did you uh what did you think about that one? I got a couple of complaints. First of all, let's talk about the overall broadcasting aspect of it. Was not a huge fan of Fox overall during the weekend of like the comic book graphics they were putting on the TV. I mean, I they've really been just, doing that all season and I definitely thought that was a little weird, you know? I think I was just starting to notice it now though. Yeah. Cuz I mean like you know, usually I'm pretty burnt out from watching football during the weekends, but when you only have four games to watch, you know, you can really pay attention a lot more. Yeah. I really wasn't liking that. So, I mean, that's my, that's my first complaint. Second of all, I cannot stand Aaron Rodgers as a human being, dude. He is just – I can't stand good. him. You know what? He's and I, too good. I try to be as objective as possible, you know, when talking about football and just, like, the Packers. Because, you know, they are a very good team, and I can definitely see them going to the Super Bowl. But, dude – I can't stand them. Actually, you know what? I don't know. I mean, we'll get to this later, but, you know, the Bucks beat them earlier in the season, so they – Yeah. It'll be an I interesting mean, NFC championship. It was definitely a tough matchup for the Rams. I mean – Oh, um, yeah. The Rams defense, were... yeah. I mean, I, I hated both those teams as a fan, personally, but I was definitely <laughs> rooting for the Rams there. A lot of hate going on here, but you know the yeah, – you, know Ra- you know my allegiance. Yeah, I mean – I I do, and my allegiance is to the opposite team of the Packers. So okay, yeah, it was, that's kind of where I was. It was, it was it was tough. It was it's tough to obviously uh, root for them, but I mean, there wasn't any doubt that this game was like the Packers were going to win this game, and the spotlight, the pregame spotlight, was on that whole Devontae Adams Jalen Ramsey matchup, which right. uh, I think they were jawing at each other pregame, and I think Adams ended up with like nine catches, sixty six yards, and a touchdown. So I mean. Yardage wise, modest game, but that uh, that touchdown, a lot of people were kind of shitting on Jalen Ramsey for letting it happen. So. Yeah, and you know what? I don't think it was sincerely his fault, but I don't think so either. Looking back at it now, Aaron Donald did not have a good game either. He was be- He w- he looked like he was pretty beat up. I'm not gonna lie, he did not look like he was playing 100. percent And I think was... Rodgers exposed that pretty hard. Yeah, and he was playing super scrappy too. Like that's just I personally, um, you know, when you're yeah, watching, he, he got like that. that uh, unnecessary roughness like right on the first drive i think right yeah yeah the the rams just played ugly like i did i knew deep down they were not going to win that game you know i would never have bet on them winning that but um yeah i mean i guess matt lafleur this is his second nfc championship now right uh yes and i mean i going back to the rams i i don't think that jared goff necessarily played bad no but he just yeah i mean he was Green playing with defense. a recently broken hand. Like, that's pretty crazy. So, yeah. that was a far-fetched matchup for him to win anyways. He just didn't have what it takes to keep up with, you know, Rodgers' offense. So Well, and a lot of those deep throws he was throwing, too, that made me kind of nervous watching it. Because I'm like, is he going to just re-break his thumb? Because, like, that does not look like it should be happening right now. Like, I was really expecting them to run a lot. Yeah, the run game actually was – it was working fairly well. I mean, there's just so much you can do – um, or there's not much you can do like when you're just constantly down points. Like eventually you're gonna have to throw, and you got Goff just didn't have it in him, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think there was a single second in that game where the Rams were like ahead of the Packers at all. It was pretty evident how badly Sean McVay wants um, a mobile quarterback to run that offense. I mean, Jared Goff is by no means like a a stoic guy that doesn't move around, but I mean, right. he doesn't have all the feet. movement that they do at the line. It's so sweet. And it's just like, I don't know if he, it makes you wonder if they're maybe going to test out like a, a different quarterback. I mean, do you think that's a possibility for the Rams? I could see that. You know what, what shocked me too. I saw that Blake Bortles was active last week. Yeah, he was. <laughs> I can't tell like if that's like, um, well, he's their backup, right? Uh, right now, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, right. I don't think – they're not going to just, like, bench Goff right. in that yeah. type of game. 
especially for Blake Bortles. I, as much as I have rooted for Blake Bortles in the past, he was, he's always been uh, on my nice list, but he, uh, I just, I don't know if I would trust Blake Bortles in that type of situation. <laughs> yeah. My roommates and I were talking though, but uh, if for some reason Goff went out and Bortles came in, wins the game. And if you, if Blake Bortles won the Super Bowl this year, I think I'd have to like take a year long break from the NFL just from like just the amount of shock that would be through my head. Just like they would just have to, yeah, they would have to retire the league. I think (laughs) give the league the death penalty for one year, pretty much. Exactly. All right, let's move on to the uh, Ravens and the Bills. This game was hard to watch because one, as a Chiefs fan, I wanted the Ravens to win that one because that would have been a much easier AFC Championship. But uh, I mean, congrats to the Bills. They, they definitely earned that win, and that was one of the games. So when you said the games weren't exactly close, this game kind of came to my mind immediately because yeah. this is the only one where the lead was, like, exactly 14 points, except for maybe the Packers one, too. I can't um, put a lot of, like, evidence to that yeah. right now. But um, anyway, yeah. So that game, was it seemed like a blowout, because, but it was just – it was tough football to watch, dude. And you know what, like – Props go out to Lamar Jackson. I hope he's doing all right, you know, because he got that concussion and everything. But, dude, holy cow. Like, that just – that was not a fun game to be watching. No, it was definitely not an offensive game, and neither was it a defensive game. It was just super ugly for both teams, honestly. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, yeah, like you mentioned, Lamar got hurt. Did you have – did you think he was going to come back into the game, like, the last time? <laughs> no. No. Not with like running no, running back on the sideline from the locker room with like a strand of toilet paper sticking out of his pants like a cape or some shit. <laughs> or like one of those QB towels that they keep to or they use the yeah, like exactly. white towels. Yeah, Beamer kind of tweet uh, last weekend, guys. It was like Lamar Jackson's just gotta take a shit. He's gonna come back out and <laughs> and win the game. Win so the he game. did not win. That was mostly just set as a joke, but yeah, the Bills defense finally showed out. I mean, they shut down Lamar's run game up before and, and he got injured. That's the one way – or that's not, like, the one way, but that's that's the best way you can beat the Ravens. Like It really is. It's the same Slow thing with down. the Titans, too. Like, you shut down running games, then the game's yours. And also the GOAT Justin Tucker missed a couple field goals, which was – Yeah. I was very surprised to see. I was kind of sad about that because I, I like him a lot. He's such a beast. Well, there were people speculating on social media that they were going to cut him from the team just for that. I'm like, he's one of the best kickers oh, in the come NFL. come on. He had a couple – he had a rough couple last weeks, but, I mean – there's that's what the bears totally missed out on doing that when they parted ways from with Robbie gold a couple of years ago and look what has happened since then. They didn't have a consistent kicker for years until yeah. this year, finally, but they're the Ravens are not going to move on. I think Justin Tucker is probably one of their all time highest scorers. I would guess he's been incredible for them yeah. in long run. So that'd be surprising. I don't really know how old he is though. He's probably getting up there. I agree. And Still, congrats on the Bills. Their fans definitely yep. deserved this win. Yeah, and did you see uh, that they, the Bills Mafia raised all that money for Lamar's uh, um, favorite charity? Charity, yeah. Yeah, 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 I saw that. It was uh, up to a little over $200,000, I think. Which, yeah, I saw that. You know what? As far as best fanship goes in the NFL, so while I'm at it, we can start with the worst, right? So the Eagles and the Cowboys and the Raiders, those are your worst <laughs> fan bases right there. And then you got the Bills. The Bills are actually nice enough people to where they will actually donate all that money. I think they got like um, a little over a thousand people to chip in for that. Yeah. So I, a lot of people were like debating if that was like a, uh you know, backhanded, like, kind of I wouldn't insert. say that's backhanded. I wouldn't say that either. I, I thought it, like, they it was a sincere thing to do. And Bill's Mafia, dude. I First thing, when COVID is, everything is all cleared up and things are open, you know, everything's safe again. I think the first thing I want to do is road trip into Buffalo. Buffalo. Road trip into Buffalo. I I'm, I'm want to attend a Bill's tailgate so bad. Let's I want to break through a table, you know, jump from an RV onto a table, get – beer all over me you know just one of those type of days like <laughs> they, they just look like they're having the time of their lives every weekend yeah well brennan uh us being co-hosts i feel like this has to be a uh, two-way endeavor that's fair we'll make a trip out of it we can we can document it sounds good and getting back to the charity part i think it'd only be backhanded if they like rob the charity yeah because be any money awful. you give towards a charity is automatically going to be a good change <clears throat> you know like that's not 
something that could ever be looked upon as bad. But like, yeah, watch, like you know, if they wanted to be really petty, they could just go and just be like, "Hey, this is we're robbing this charity." <laughs> See, that would Give that would be money. pretty horrible. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, exactly. And I'm just speculating here. I'm never, I never condone violence, and I would never let that happen. I would go there and stop it personally. Yeah. All right, let's Fair. move on. Chiefs Browns, Brennan. Oof. I hate it. Do you, do you want me to start this, or do you, you want do you... you start this? I uh, right. need a second to cool down here. All right. Well, I just want to say first off, any time, anywhere, Chad yeah. Henny came into the game. Um, I mean, this game, seriously, it went perfect for the Browns in order for a win. Um, they couldn't have been handed a better situation, honestly. Yeah. But because Patrick Mahomes, as everyone knows, went down uh, second half, right? Yeah, think, like right at the start of the fourth quarter. Yeah, with the concussion. But before that, he looked pretty banged up. With the, He looked like he was dealing with another injury. Was that – is that – Anything like so I can't... they were more worried that um here I got I got Andy Reid's quote for you um mm-hmm. right after the game here. So Andy Reid said he got hit in the back of the head and kind of knocked the wind out of him. He's doing great right now, which is real positive. Passed all the deals that he needed to pass, so we'll see where it goes from there. Just talk to him. He's doing good. We'll see how he is tomorrow, but right now he's feeling good. Yeah, so, I mean Adam Schefter just tweeted not like today that he is still in the concussion protocol and that it's actually too early to determine his status. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's going to the next game. So we won't talk about that too much yet, but right. Uh, But I agree though. The Browns were handed a very good situation, but their defense is just not very good. But a lot of people were saying that uh, the Browns should have had, like the Browns should have had that game because Daniel Sorensen, one of the chiefs uh, defensive backs, uh, there was a pretty dirty helmet to helmet hit that the refs didn't call. That Captain was right Dan. In, yeah, right at the Browns end zone. Like right at the yeah, Brown side end zone. And that pretty much sealed their fate because they didn't score again after that. Dude, that what do you think about that? I know so without here's bias, what do you think about that play call in that NFL? That's I the will agree that is like that should have been called. That one hundred percent should have been called. But refs don't see everything. I don't yeah. think I, no, I will, the 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 unnecessary roughness like that should have been a targeting hit for sure. But what do you think about the whole fumbling into the end zone being a touchback and the other team gets it back? Like, what do you, what are your opinions on that, like call? I think that's valid. I hate that's one of the worst rules I know, in the NFL because it has its uh, it has its conveniences and inconveniences you know so say for you for you for instance here if uh say if the bears were to force a fumble in the end zone to get that touchback you would think that's a good thing though right assuming this is all assuming they go down in the end zone because they're still able to run it back if they're not down well yeah in your situation you like the call because it just benefited you but in the grand scheme of things in the grand scheme of things um the play call is so dumb it should just be a you know it went like a regular fumble out of bounds like it just it, they're on the one yard line. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, he still stopped him from scoring. Like that's that was a that's a good thing. But like it shouldn't be a fucking touchback, dude. It's so yeah. dumb. Yeah. But yeah, going back to the hit, it was that. a it was a dirty hit, and I'm surprised that that wasn't called. Honestly. I am too, and I feel like a lot of like actual refs out there that were watching the game were probably pretty upset by that too. But like I said, you know, refs are human. They don't call it. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of stuff like stuff gets like teams get away with doing a lot of stuff throughout the season. Yeah. And in playoff games too. Cause you remember that New Orleans Saints uh, LA Rams game a couple years back in the NFC championship. And there was that pass interference that should have been called. That wasn't. And that pretty much cost the Saints the game. It did. Yep. So I'm just saying like that. Kind of one of those cases right now where the fate had was decided by the refs. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. wasn't like a final play by any means, but. No, but that would that would have been a large contributing factor to the Browns securing a win had that been yeah. called. I think the 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 biggest contributing factor was Kevin Stefanski's play calling on that final drive for the Browns. I think they had like seven minutes left, and that was when the Browns were down five, mm-hmm. and they decided to call like a run play, uh, a running back screen. They gained like negative yardage on that and then picked up like five yards on third down. So it was like fourth and nine and they punted it back to the chiefs with like four minutes left. And I'm just like, okay, well you guys just blew the game. You guys just threw it away. And I, and all Chad Henney had to do after going after Mahomes, he didn't have to win that game. All he had to do, no. 
was keep the hold Chiefs. on for dear life. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Hold on for dear life because I'm not going to say he's a bad quarterback by any means, but because he's he's a season vet or he's a league vet, dude. You know, he's started for the Dolphins in the past. Like he's he's had experience starting. So yeah, I'm he's just saying, been on a lot of teams, Carmen. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, he's been on a lot of teams, and you know what? If he has to play against Buffalo next week, so be it. But we'll get to that too later. But um, yeah, dude, this game, I was a wreck watching this thank you for being my emotional support friend during this, uh, you were the only one that was like hey buddy you doing all right because both my roommates <laughs> were cheering for the browns and i just i just needed an i love you message uh, that's i just yeah, needed this was, is one of those situations where i just needed a hug just to get through the day yeah, i was no, like i was i was thinking of you i was about to just literally destroy half the furniture in my living room and just like i was like throwing my hat and shit like on the ground and I was just – I was having a panic attack. I was like, oh, my God, what are they doing? And then because – this was, like, right after Henny had that interception, too. Or threw that oh, I pick. forgot he I forgot he threw a pick. It was an ugly one, too. Dude. That's right in the end drive. zone. Yeah. That was really bad. You're right. That was ugly. See, that's another that was atrocious. Where, uh, touchback just hurts. So – What do you mean? Well, because, you know, he fumbled one down. Or – Picked and went down. There's a, if it's a turnover and the other team recovers it and they go down in the end. Well, that – well, yeah, that's com- that's completely different, but yeah. Oh, are we talking about two different things? Well, yes, we are because when – you know, when when he fumbled it and it went out of the back of the end zone. Oh, it went out. Your team okay. – yeah, your team didn't recover it. Yeah. It just went out of the – like, you know what I'm talking about, that rule? Yeah, I was – yeah, okay, my bad, dude. I was under a completely different impression. Oh, no, you're good. So I, that's, I do, that's I do agree that's a very dumb rule. I yeah, very dumb. Agree. Okay. But I'm yeah, glad we're on the same page finally. There we go, there we go. There's a but, yeah, no, it was, the, it was definitely a nail-biter for the Chiefs and Chiefs fans. Yeah, um, and, I, you know, I predicted that it was going to be a pretty – Ugly. Yeah. If they were going to win, it was going to be pretty ugly. I we actually Chiefs predicted had a we predicted everything in that game. Browns covered, Chiefs won, and the under hit. So, hey, yeah. we're three zero right now. Yeah. Look, look at look at us, right? Yeah, exactly. Dude. But I, uh, the last the the Bills game we didn't hit the the over we said in that game was far from hitting. Yeah, that first, one so. we were completely false. I'm pretty sure when some you lose some. Yeah, were we completely accurate for uh, Packers Rams? Uh, I think we, I think we took Packers cover. I know possibly, we did that, but um, I don't think the, the over. Hit. I don't think we took the over. I think we took the under. Okay, then we have that done for sure. Because I think the over under. No, the over hit. did the over hit. Over hit. One, so yeah, it was like forty five. I think so. Oh, it definitely that's so won. low. Yeah, I know. I can't remember. I we were novices picking that one. That was that was a bad pick by us. But yeah, let's move me. on to the last game. Let's see how we did in this one. The Tampa Bucks Bay Buccaneers and the uh, New Orleans Saints. Saruman I, versus Gandalf from Lord correct. of the Rings. And I felt so bad watching this game because oh, after yes. just watch. So this game itself was – this was probably one of the better games to watch this weekend until the Saints started just sucking. It looked like they just forgot how to play football. Like Alvin Kamara. Well, it, it started off so hot for it the did. Saints. I mean, it their did. defense was looking good. You know, they they weren't finishing drives, but they you know had back to back field goals. They were up six. Yeah, so you know, I, we, I, we thought the we thought the Saints were going to cover it first. That's what it looked yeah, like. No, I, yeah, and I mean Breeze as it was just disappointing to watch, man. I mean. Especially, you know, as a Bears fan, I just watched the, my team lose to this team, and it was pretty pretty gross showing because, I mean, the Bucs, to be fair, the Bucs defense showed out. I mean, four turnovers, Breeze threw three picks. I mean, watching Breeze throw some of those passes, dude, it's just like watching him throw a damn beach ball, man. I mean, they were in a dome, and it looked like the wind was catching, like, every single pass. Like, those throws were just not not getting the job done out there. Well, could we attribute to like whatever the hell was on his arm? Because it looked like he was like bleeding down at it first too. Like I think yeah, and I mean he he, hit somewhere and it just kind of messed up his throwing. And he, I think he was still playing through like that rib injury that he had in the regular season. Um, But I mean, it it was just it was tough to watch. And when I like shit my pants when they put in Jameis Winston, like he came in and threw a touchdown. Which I mean, first of all, as a Bucks as the Bucks defense, how do you not expect him to? come in and throw a pass. I mean, you have Drew Brees out there who can barely throw it down the field and then bring in Jameis Winston. You got to be expecting that. It's not like they're bringing in Taysom Hill who's going to 
run it up the middle. Exactly. So that was, that was fun to see, but it also hurt because that was actually the exact play that the bears ran against <laughs> the saints last week and uh, dropped the pass on. So, Hey, good uh, for the saints uh, getting paid dirt on that one, but. Yeah, I mean, it didn't exactly come through for them, though, because, you know, they still lost by 10. No, and it makes you think, like, there's no way the Saints are going to bench Drew Brees in a game like that. No, especially, especially since that's going to be his last, last one. Yeah, so they, and they were probably too scared to throw in Jameis for any more plays. He probably would have thrown more yeah. picks, honestly. And you know what? With the amount of injuries he sustained mm-hmm. this season, you know, for a guy his age, because he's early 40s. Yeah. So, you know, for a guy being able to kind of play through that still, there's some honor in that, I would say. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I couldn't imagine doing that when I was in my 40s, dude, playing yeah. professional football. Like, are you kidding me? See, that right there is a man who just loves the game enough to, like, literally do whatever it takes just to have one more successful season before you're on your way out. And, you know, yeah, I mean, before yeah. the season even started, we all knew this was going to be his last year, regardless if you won or not. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure, and now it's definitely looking like it. he's uh, planning on retiring. I don't know if he's made it official yet, though. But um, a His pretty interesting – yeah, no, that's true. I mean, and a, a pretty interesting stat that they threw up pregame was that um, out of the both starting QBs, Brady and Breeze, they had a combined seven Super Bowl wins and 11 appearances. And I, I thought that was pretty hilarious because I was like, doesn't Brady have uh, six, six of those? Of those? Seven. Yeah, and so another stat, Tom Brady has 10% of Super Bowl wins in the NFL since his existence. See, that is just crazy, dude. I mean, that, be that reminded me of like the like Wayne Gretzky stat with his mm-hmm. brother because um, they were like the highest scoring duo in like hockey history um, points wise yeah. with Wayne Gretzky having like 2,800 something points and his brother having four. <laughs> so it's like that was literally the comparison between the two. I was like, you can't really uh, – no, that's – it's literally only – like, so the Gretzky brothers, for instance, that's only because they have the same last name. They want to make it a cool stat to combine. Exactly. Them. But when you really look at it, you know, Wayne Gretzky's obviously the GOAT here in hockey. Yeah, he had uh, 99% of all the points. Yeah, Pretty much 100. Higher. We'll go higher than that even. Why not? <laughs> 99.9. Yeah, dude, this, this probably was one of the better games to watch, though, just because I really didn't think the Bucks were going to come through and win. <clears> so it was interesting to – like, you know, I'm being impartial here because, you know, I, you know my distaste for old TB number 12. So, yeah. uh, I I enjoy watching this game. Like, no, for the was... most part, until the Saints started falling apart, I really enjoyed watching it. Yeah, and you know what? I agree. Um, what do you think of uh, Jameis Winston probably starting next year? I don't. I honestly, the Saints. There's something up with the men. I don't see them starting Jameis Winston. I think they'll go the Taysom Hill route. Honestly. I can see that because you know they're not going to have a good enough draft pick to get a decent quarterback. No, and it, it, it's annoying, honestly, because I think Jameis deserves another shot on a team. Mm-hmm. And um, it was pretty cool, though, seeing him come in against his former, his former team and just throw a 50-yard touchdown. I, th- I, I loved that. But yeah, because he got drafted by the Bucks, right? Yeah, he was on the Bucks. Yeah. He, he, just... wanted, to co- he wanted to eat, eat that W, dude. He wanted to come in and eat the W. I know. So, yeah, that was, that was the divisional round. Uh, yep. We were pretty good on our picks, I would say, for the most yeah, part. Yeah, we probably we went 50-50, maybe a, maybe a little over a little 50%, which, hey, that's a fair betting fair betting day. Because at least three of the teams we predicted to win won. Yeah. That's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good thing. Um, and a lot of those are pretty much givens, too. But um, let's move on to the conference championships, Brennan. Mm-hmm. The time is nigh. Uh, it. Yeah, so this is always the most stressful weekend, in my opinion, of football. Um, especially, especially if your team is in it. <laughs> especially if your team is in it. So last, uh, this is three years consecutive. Out. Actually, uh, so I actually have a cool staff for you that I learned this weekend. So the Chiefs are the first team in the AFC to host three consecutive conference championships. And the only other team in the NFC that did that was the Eagles when Andy Reid was on that team. Mm. So I think Andy Reid just really likes conference championships and wants to just keep going as <laughs> like – Get He's as many great coach. as possible. No, no, absolutely. And I mean, Chiefs fans, like you guys are spoiled rotten. Like, oh, I, don't I know. I'm horrible. Hear, I don't want to hear you any complaints about being, you know, anxious about the games. You, you guys are just spoiled. Well, you like to see your team win, you know? Andy Reid is like, you know, you, your grandma oh, he's, he's, that's he's, like, hey, have you had enough to eat after you've had like three plates full of food? He's like, oh, eat some more. He's literally, <laughs> literally that, so. 
Dude, that's one of the best comparisons I've ever heard. Of. Yeah, and that just came up with that on the spot. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, Brennan's a big improv guy. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, so first up, um, so the 205 game central time is yep. the Bucks and the Packers. Yep. So what do we think about this one? So the line's at three. Yeah, and the over under 50, 51? 51, yeah. So I – this game is actually pretty tricky because the Bucks are one of the only teams that could beat the Packers this, in the regular season. And if they, they were the, the Saints, one like, of the only ones who did, they yeah. beat them 38 to 10. Yeah. Um, it wasn't that, even like a close loss. No. And that was, uh, that game was because they were able to get a lot of consistent pressure on Rogers. And um, the Packers did also have like a half healthy Devonte because he had just come back from missing a couple games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just want to throw out there that uh, the Bears actually beat the Buccaneers this season. So, I mean, it's no biggie. Um, but anyway, back to what we were talking Six about. Six shout-out, bro. <laughs> the the Bucks this week get back Vita Vea on their defensive line, mm-hmm. who I think was on, like, the COVID list or something. So that's that's some big help. Nebraska former alum, Ndamukong Sue, he looks like primetime Sue out there. He's he that big like back he attack. To. Dude, he was looking – he know, looked really he's, good. He's still really good, but he's not like there's not like a dirty aspect about it anymore. You know. Well, that's like good. That's honestly, like yeah, no, it's stuff. probably for it's the probably best. Probably for the best. You know what? Yeah, represent us in a positive way. Yeah, but I mean, if it. that if that D line plays with the same head of steam as they did last week um, against the Saints, I think that'll cause some problems for the Packers' offensive line, which is you know there are absolutely. A couple guys, you know what? So. The Bucks want this Super Bowl, dude. Like Tom Brady. Like him going yeah, to the Bucks and signing a one-year contract, that was a it was season. four. It was for a Super Bowl, yeah. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to turn this team around, and we're going to get a Super Bowl this year. So pretty much yeah. everybody that I like, except for Julian Edelman, like, come with me. But, um, yeah, this game is going to be a toss-up in my opinion. I think, yeah. I mean, after saying all that, luckily for the Packers, they have Aaron Rodgers and really two really good running backs and arguably the best wide receiver in the league. So, I mean, three – the spread being three, dude. I, That's scary because the only reason that, you know, that um, that Browns cover was a lock because of how big that spread was. And we're able to yeah. determine that, you know, the Chiefs haven't been covering lately. Like, all their wins have been kind of ugly since after the Jets win. And, you know, all those games have been pretty close. So, that yeah. was kind of a dead giveaway. But, like, you know, spreads this small, those are always kind of dangerous in my opinion. So, I want to say – so pretty much whoever we pick the spread for is who we're picking to win the game, essentially. Yeah, and I I'm going off of the Packers. Their defense has been good, and I mean that's because you know they're one of the more well rested units because of how controlling Rodgers is on offense. I mean he can just go out there and you know let his guys rest up for seven minutes, and they're just a scary team, dude. I think. Um, yeah, I think people would probably need to hop on this Packers cover soon before it goes up than more than three. Yeah. Because I think I think the Packers are I think they're gonna win and I think they're gonna cover that. Yeah, and you know what the Bucks definitely do have a chip on their shoulder this year. I definitely could see them winning as well, but mm-hmm. I'm gonna go ahead with the Packers here because like you said, Packers defense is looking pretty good and all they have to do is shut down Brady. Yeah. And yeah, it's kind of like cable of that they got home field advantage too. Yeah, it's like this matchup because I compared you know Brady and uh, Breeze to those old wizards from you know Lord of the Rings. This one is more I'm making a Game of Thrones reference. Rogers is the Night King, and Brady's coming in from Thrones like now. you know no he's he's like Tywin Lannister. He's kind of still like a bad guy, but you damn know, you'll root for like the. The guy who's alive, at least. Rogers is like you are oppressing these middle-aged age hey, groups here. It's I'm not I'm not trying to be oppressive, but I do. I also want to add in the fact I don't know if you saw this, but a, a Packers fan, yeah, you've seen the whole sea shanties like meme, like all of that pick up recently on social medias, right? I listen to like ten of them every day in the shower. Come on. Oh, absolutely! I've I, I have a perfect playlist I can send you that I found. But um, send it my way, bro. It's it's after hearing this, it, you won't want to. Sea shanties are dead because a Packers fan came out and made a sea shanty about Aaron Rodgers. Come and, on, you know, he, it was it was disgusting, and I hated sinful. it. Sinful. That's downright sinful. 
it was it really was but it's hedonistic Brennan. honestly it doesn't really change my uh my pick i think this team is scary and i think they honestly look like the best team right now and if they win the super bowl i wouldn't be surprised and that would be like the first of the four horsemen of the apocalypse arriving is the Packers winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> something bad's going to happen after that too. So. Yeah, tell me how you really feel. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just okay. We'll uh, we'll decide here. So Packers cover and yep. over fifty one, right? Yeah, I think I, I think, think the both points these teams are capable of high. Scoring. I'm hoping for a good game, so I I I think the points will hit. Yeah, and I'm kind of hoping for Packers cover. I like kind of so I'm kind of mixed feelings about like how these games are arranged. Because for one, yeah. you know, you know, as someone who has a team in the AFC Conference Championship, you want that game. Because last year, I had a much more fun time watching that game because of how early it was. I was just able to get it out of the way. And the year before that, you know, I'm driving home from Dallas. And, like, I'm listening to the game in the car after just, like, hearing the Rams, like, Saints won. And yeah. you're just building up that, like, anxiety all day. Just like, holy cow, are they going to win or not? Like, I just get this over with. And then – True. Uh, you know what? I, I am glad that this game is going to be first, though, because I'm actually very excited to watch it. Yeah, I am too. Moving on, the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs. I almost yep. just—I have a coin in my hand right now. I want to flip it to see who I want, like who I think is going to win this one. All right, who's who's uh, tails, who's heads? All right, heads, Chiefs, tails, Bills. Wow, fail. That's not a good call. Heads, Chiefs. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> all right. But in all seriousness, though, so uh, Mahomes. What's, the, what's this line at? Three as three. well? Yeah. Over, three, under, okay. over under 53. Jeez. They're really uh, predicting some high scoring affairs here. Oh, this one, I don't think it's going to be that high scoring, dude, unless the Bills are just like wiping the floor with them. Because this the game. The over is definitely the, like, the pick that a lot of people are going to be eyeing. And I think. I, I could see both teams kind of coming off to a slower start. I see that too. Cause you know what? Watching both of these teams throughout the year, they have a message to send early on in the games to their, like whoever they're playing, but then you see them kind of fall off a little bit. Cause you know, at least in the chiefs case too, you see them, um, <clears throat> they're really only playing well where they have to. And you know, I'm a firm believer in this saying, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And yeah. I feel like that's been the case with them for a lot of games this year because they have just barely escaped a loss. So I'm just going to say this. This game is going to depend on if Patrick Mahomes is starting or not. I agree. It and all depends on that. So typical concussion protocol in the NFL is 19 days. And I really don't think Mahomes' issue is that bad. So I'm just saying he could be playing in this game. No, I say even if he – I think he's going to pass it no matter what. I think they're just going to kind of kick it under the rug. Even and honestly, regardless, he's Take going to start. Uh, Even if it's going to be some like uh weekend at Bernie's type shit, they're going to carry him out. <laughs> he's just going to be, you know, visor a little bit darker than usual. Like he, he he's going to start this game. The Kansas City Mafia is going to be forging his concussion tests. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I but mean, uh, even if he doesn't play, which, you know, I'm praying to God, but Chad Henney I think he could hang out this game should he start because the Chiefs have so many offensive, like, offensive weapons, Brennan. Like, this is going to be just insane to watch too because you saw that he was like definitely making use out of Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey in the last game, and that was helping them not lose. So, But the thing is, though, the Bills have a very good defense. They, their defense isn't bad. They looked good last week against Compared the to what the Chiefs' offense could be. The Ravens, be. the Ravens' offense, to be fair, is a complete 360 to what the Chiefs' offense is. So it's, uh, it's going to be a tough task for the Bills to just go from, you know, game planning on defending Lamar Jackson to game planning on possibly defending, you know, Patrick Mahomes, which I'm guessing they're going to game plan for right. regardless. But like you were saying, ah. Chad Henney, he's definitely a good enough quarterback to cruise a team to a win, you know, when they're already up a couple scores. But, but I, I, I am not, I am not good. willing to bet on him to win an AFC championship. Yeah, you know what? I, I do think defense is going to have to play a pretty big role here. Chiefs defense is not that bad. Steve Spaniolo is oh. a great, great DC. Yeah. But, and you know what? They were able to hold, like, you know, a Baker Mayfield offense to less than 20 points. So I'm pretty confident in that. But – 
is Baker Mayfield at the same skill level currently right now, like offensive weapons and like all that to take into factor. Is he comparable to Josh Allen in that? And to me, absolutely not. But the Bills offense was slightly concerning last week. I mean, there was a point where they had like 18 passing plays versus one rushing play. And it was Josh Allen that rushed it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they only put up 17 points. Six of those points came off of a red zone pick six by Lamar. Um, I mean, Ravens defense is slightly better than the Chiefs, obviously. But I still think Allen, he looked a little shaky out there. I mean, he was missing deep shots early that he rarely misses. And I mean, this is a young kid that does not have any playoff experience and he's going up against the reigning Super Bowl champions. So, I mean, I, my pick does depend on Mahomes health, but I mean, I think if he's health healthy, I, I believe the chiefs win and I think they cover. Uh, I just, I think the bills aren't quite there. They're close. They're just not there yet. Yeah. And I, I, it does come for me to know that the chiefs have, you know, played Buffalo already this year and beat them in Buffalo. So in this game's, you know, yeah. Like, I don't know if I said this last week or not, but home field advantage does mean a lot to certain teams, depending on their family. Oh, absolutely. Especially this year, because, you know, a lot of teams still have to play in empty stadiums. So you can't really say, like, oh, you know what, like our fans got us and stuff like that. Like it's going to be a great environment to be yeah. in. You know, Arrowhead is one of those stadiums that's allowing people in. Yeah, he's So I definitely brothers. think I could have – yeah. Those Kansas but, uh, City people. Yeah, I know. Those we're, folk. We're those Missouri bunch. folk. Yeah, we're an awful bunch. Uh, sue me. But um, I do think that – just the Chiefs could win this one very – I wouldn't say easily. It's going to be a very hard-fought game, but I do think the Chiefs got this. So, I'm going to say – So, what is your uh, – what is going to be your pregame – like, just – what are you going to do to prepare for this one, being a Chiefs fan? Oh, my God. Um, well, so, my girlfriend just got back from California today, so I'll be probably be cooking right. dinner, like, during Slight this game. Flex. But I'll be, um, be drinking heavily. <laughs> I'll be off COVID protocol, so I I can be I am going to. Um, you know what? I almost want to wear a Chiefs jersey and break through a table, just to flex on Bills fans. But they're such nice people. Like I would feel so bad if I did anything to diss Bills fans this weekend. And you'd have to break one of your own tables. So I don't. That's they're pretty cheap. A... You know, none of those tables cost. <laughs> You're more gonna go buy much. one just just to do that. I've done it before. I'll do it again. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Okay, now, but uh, what are you gonna do to prepare for it as a non-cheese fan? I kind of want to hear what you're gonna do to watch it. You're just gonna—I mean, eat yeah, some I'm just drink. Text I'll me if you start feeling sad. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll be definitely be keeping in touch with you, seeing how how you're feeling. But I I do think that uh, in in three weeks, right? Because the Super Bowl Super Bowl Sunday is February sixth. Yep. I do think February that 7th. Uh, February seventh. That's right. That's Sunday. Yeah. Um, I, I think that uh, the Super Bowl is going to be a Chiefs Packers. And That's my prediction. I think that is very much going to happen as well. And you know what? This is the uh, the sixty year rematch. Yeah, and I mean, I as much as that matchup doesn't really you know Hold up excite, anymore, but excite me too much. But I do think those are two really good offenses, and um, I don't know, dude that Packers team, they're scary. So, and it'll be in Tampa. So, I mean, if the Bucks end up winning, pulling that off, they'll pretty much be playing the home game. So I that'd be pretty cool too. I, I do think so too. And just honestly, I think this is going to be a good Super Bowl regardless. Any team that's getting to the Super Bowl this year deserves to be there. Yeah, it was a, it was a crazy year and it's kind of, it's kind of sad that it's, we're getting to the end of it, but bittersweet tears. That's what I'm feeling right now. Yeah, no, it's true. I'm choking up, man. <laughs> hey, so speaking of choking up, we uh, we kind of hit on it earlier, but we had one of the greatest possible uh, or greatest quarterbacks possibly play his last game in the NFL, Drew Brees. So, yeah, he yeah. Um, he made me really sad watching the TV because um, you know he was like looking back at his family and stuff, like in the or he was like blowing kisses to his family and stuff, like after the yeah. game. He was like looking back, like when he was going to the tunnel. There, I, yeah. I would say the photojournalists that took pictures of him doing all this stuff. First of all, they deserve a raise because they hit every uh, like ethos and pathos like <laughs> out there. All right, okay, they, yeah, they, yeah, they hit everybody, and um, like, dude, just 
Drew Brees, he had one hell of a career. He did. He really did. Because, so, uh, yeah, yeah, dude, I don't even – I'm speechless. Like, yeah. good for him. Because, you know, that, we, grew, we grew up with this guy, man. I know. It's, it's, it's tough to see. I was always kind of, you know, you always – backdoor rooted for the saints because it's just like impossible to hate Drew Brees, dude. I mean, no, exactly. He, he was, is such a clean cut guy. Like he's so just, he's a good person, you know, he was, he was in, uh, in that city in new Orleans through it all. I mean, he was a big part of when, uh, they were hit by hurricanes hard a few years ago. So for sure. Yeah. He, he always, uh, stood up for the city. So it's definitely, uh, definitely pretty, pretty big, uh, name to be retiring. So, yeah, but you know I'm what? glad we got to witness it. Even though he finished off with a loss, I still think he's going to have a pretty good legacy in NOLA. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, all right, so B Merck, let's uh, let's transition to our uh, our final closure segment here. So we have the um, we have our list of the hardest goodbyes. Yeah, to going off of that, players. right? Yeah, you go so, ahead and go first. So the first one I got is actually Marshawn Lynch former Seahawks running back and Raiders running back. And over but, and over and over and over. Yep. And over and over also and over. one of one of the all-time greatest NFL personalities. But when he posted the pick of his cleats hanging on the power lines, it was it 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 hit me deep, dude. It was he came back, just though, symbolic. He? he did. He actually ended up coming back I think twice to play again. But it's still it's it was still just a a classic. It was symbolic, you know what I mean? For sure. And um, I'm speaking to mainly my dad with this one. Um, I have Priest Holmes, mm. who arguably was I he, would say he was the was chief he running receiver? back. He was a running back. Oh, running back. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So I, um, I remember this day very specifically. I was like four or five years old. But, like, just watching the TV, like, he's crying at the press conference. Like, I was around Chiefs fans at the time, too. They were all, like, crying, too. And I was like, holy cow. Like, what? what's going on here? And they're like, pretty strong <clears throat> retired. And I had his jersey. Like, that was my first Chiefs jersey. Yeah. So, like, that was just a very emotional moment, too. He's still doing it right, though, from what I know. He's still, he's still kicking and living. So That's good. Well, I will do an emotional one for me then as well. Johnny Knox from the Chicago Bears. He was a wide receiver and actually could have been an all-time Bears great but he retired because of injury after he was literally like folded in half, like a table on the field. Yeah. And uh, he ended up retiring because, you know, it was actually, it was a career ending injury. So yeah, dude, that was a sad not, like, one snap during that. Like that's, that's one of the toughest ones you can ever look at. Like, it was back injuries an, like an that ugly are, injury. It yeah. really was. Those are terrifying. But so, um, yeah. shout yeah, out Johnny that, Knox. Yeah, and that you know that's just the unfortunate thing about the game, though. Too like I can't even be mad at um, oh god, I can't even remember his name right now. Um, the guy that injured Mahomes on Sunday, I can't even be mad at him. Mahomes ran with the ball, so like that's kind of like on him if he's going to go. And he didn't slide or anything too. So I would say one hundred percent, that's a clean head. I mean, injuries are they're usually that's, freak that's accidents that are sad. Yeah. So exactly, you know, I've had my share with uh, like concussions and stuff, but um. It's, you know, yeah, injuries just suck, man. But um, from jumping through mu- too much tables, too many tables. Um, no, surprisingly. <laughs> that one, like, for tables, you kind of got to use your body. Yeah. You have to use fair. inertia. That's a, that's that's a physics word. All right. Up next, I got uh, Brett Favre. Yeah. And, you know, love him or hate him. Yeah. This I, guy, was, I was happy to see him retire. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this guy was himself a legacy. I would still say he's one of the best quarterbacks of all time. Um, not only with just the Packers, but he had like a statistical record season with the Vikings, like right after that. And you know what? He sure did. He just I, owned the NFC North for many years. Yeah, yeah. And I had I had my qualms with uh, Brett Favre um, every now and then, but like I still think you know this this should be noted. He was one of the best QBs of all time. You know, seeing him retire, like that was a pretty big hit to not just Packers fans. Like it's a lot of people that just watched him play. Because I feel like a lot of people that watch football while he was there, they might not be able to name too many players, but they definitely knew Brett Favre's name because he was just a national hit, you know? Hey, and he ended up doing pretty well for himself after he retired. He got yeah, into the gene, gene business. Yeah. yeah we, won't, we won't talk about his controversy in Mississippi, but uh, yeah. Probably. I was just talking about his jeans commercials. Oh, his jeans commercials. Yeah, those are fun. Yep. Love jeans. All right, Brian, go ahead. All right, this uh, next one I'll do a little two for one because they're both they were both on the same team. Um, but first off, Andrew Luck retiring in his prime. 
God. I'm going to drop in Andrew Luck, I think, two weeks in a row. But it was just one of the craziest, I think, retirings that anyone had ever seen. I, I mean, was – I was surprised, but not surprised at the same time. You know what I mean? Like he, yeah. so I was shocked just to hear that it happened, but the reasons behind it, I was like, yeah, that makes completely sense. Like that. No, makes I mean, he's a, he's a smart guy. He, there's been so many instances and in, with quarterbacks getting injured, you know, all throughout um, NFL history. I mean, Peyton Manning with his neck, you know, Joe Theismann with his back I think um, you had all the there's just so many instances that you could bring up about quarterbacks just never being the same after injuries like that so uh, hey he was a Stanford guy right so he, he's he knows what he's doing he's I'm sure yeah. he's he's doing you know, fine his injuries actually bring up a good point though like that's another reason why good linemen should be drafted to teams like every now and then because that is an overlooked position a lot oh absolutely because his, um, his linemen are 100% the reason that he retired. Well, yeah, and it's it's tough because the Colts line has been pretty good since then. So Since Phil Rivers. Yeah, so – and then the other guy I got on the Colts was actually Avante Davis when he uh, oh, retired nice, at uh, halftime of a game because they were <laughs> losing, and he just he just quit. So That's – that's more, yeah. That's not even like sad. That's just memorable. Like, yeah, it, yeah. That's exactly. It, it wasn't a sad one. It was just hilarious. But um, he was all. He was really good. And I, it was sad because after the game, you know, everyone was like giving him shit. You know, why would you quit on your team like that? God, I I mean, to be fair, they were losing, so it wasn't a great look. But he was like, I don't know. He's like, I was sitting on the the sideline, and I was just like, I don't belong on the field anymore. And so that that was pretty sad to hear. And he was he was a good cornerback so it was uh that one was tough as well but that was also just funny so 100 yeah. percent, yeah but I, I feel so much for these guys that like are just kind of done with the game itself like Marshall Lynch for instance like you know it's so easy to get burnt out on just doing football for like your oh absolutely life, much you I know, will like, never blame I, any of them for retiring yeah like when I stopped playing football I was like okay I'm I'm done like I'm not going yeah. back to this because yeah it's just it's so <laughs> You it's compare yourself to retiring football no, to Marshawn Lynch? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, it's just a good feeling to kind of put it behind you. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. You can say the same thing. No, obviously, I'm not going to compare myself to an NFL <laughs> player. Why would I ever do such a horrible and harmful thing, Brennan? No, but, um, yeah, I do, I do kind of get what they're – like, you know, when you're burnt out, you're burnt out. And that's the same yeah. with every job. Like, you're just ready to be done. Um, yeah. All right. Up next, it's not really retire. Uh, kind of a early end of a season, like end of a career. Derek Thomas, the um, um, right. I would arguably say one of the best Kansas City Chiefs linebackers to ever exist. And yeah. he was unfortunately involved in a car accident that took his life back in the early two thousands. But um, yeah, we yeah. didn't really get to see too much of him play either. No, because he um, he only had ten seasons in the NFL at that point, and you know it, that's it, a lot it, of seasons. Just, yeah, there's a lot of like sad aspects of like players who are definitely still in their prime. Cause I would definitely say early thirties, you can still, you know, get a lot, like get a couple really good more seasons out. I mean, that's um, yeah. He died young in comparison of what the usual age of humans dying is. So yeah, exactly. Career wise NFL, it, it might've been on the, he was definitely a league vet at that point. Yeah. So it definitely super sad. Yeah. hundred percent. So yeah, Derek Thomas, I actually, um, I was literally like finger on the mouse going to buy a Derek Thomas jersey this year. And I'm so sad that I did. And I was just like, God, I got to do it. I got to do it. Hey, there's like, still yeah, time. There's still I know. time. There's still I time. I, convincing. If the Chiefs win the Super Bowl this year, I've made a bet with my roommates. I have to spend as much money as I can on a Patrick Mahomes jersey. Uh, pick someone cool, man. What? Pick, a, pick someone, you know. You're like, right. I should get a custom Jackson Mahomes jersey. Just put like Jay Mahomes on it. Oh my god! That that would have like uh, you know, like a ash cheeks cut out in the back, you know, like assless chaps or some shit. And the jersey on the front is just like ripped down the middle. And <laughs> yeah, like some up like a vest, like some ripped jeans or something. Yeah, I got the but, jersey ripped uh, off too. But yeah, no, that uh, definitely Derek Walker. That's a sad one because uh, he didn't Derek really Thomas. get to retire, or Derek Th- Thomas. Um, he didn't really get to retire on his own terms. So for sure. Yeah. Um, um, all right. The last one I got was uh, another one on the Bears. Kyle Long, one of the best uh, tackles on the Bears of all time, retiring at age 31. I liked um, him. 
He was such a beast, dude. He's just a character. Him and Chris Long, his brother, yeah, were just one same. of those uh, brotherly duos that everyone kind of liked to watch in the NFL, especially when they would match up against each other. Um, yeah, those so are always that, some of the fun ones to watch, dude. That was that was a that was a sad one for sure. But he was Bears fans were kind of like, you know, they they figured it was coming because he was definitely uh, his his play was starting to kind of deteriorate. So. You know, which comes see him with that position injured. too. Linemen don't last forever. Definitely, definitely. Uh, doesn't a lot of Chris wear and Long, tear. Yeah, doesn't. I'm sorry. Doesn't Chris Long just like despise the NFL now or something? Chris kinda, Long. He like is very vocal on Twitter. I know, and he's he's definitely a character. And I, I like I his him. energy, but like, dude, I love his energy. Yeah. All right. Uh, my last one, Peyton Manning. There it is. I hated the man. Every, Jesus, uh, as, as soon as he got on the Broncos, I, okay. how do you hate let Peyton me, Manning? Let me be fair. Let me be fair. As soon as he got to the Broncos, I hated him because he wiped the floor with the Chiefs every year that he like the Chiefs could not beat him because he he's such a good quarterback. I respected the hell out of him though. Like I went to a couple of games where, like um, you know Chiefs were playing Denver and just watching his skill, dude. Like I couldn't even be mad when he made like a really good play because he's incredible. Yeah, and um, you know he had some he had some Super Bowl bloopers. We'll we'll, uh, we'll throw that in there. That Seahawks one was pretty ugly. Um, those were those were definitely towards the end of his career where yeah. he was not uh, not in his prime. So, but hey, he retired probably one of the most memorable retirees. Yeah, of right all after time a Super because, Bowl against Cam Newton, dude, that was actually yeah. like electric. I was rooting for the Broncos that entire game because I mean that's I, what I had nothing against the Panthers, but yeah. like. I knew it was Peyton Manning's last game regardless. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping happens to Aaron Rodgers this year. I hope he just, you know, wins a Super Bowl and retires. Yeah, I'm a sucker for storylines, too, in the NFL, too. It's like, I mean, like, there could be a player that I just absolutely despise as a person, um, like Peyton Manning, for instance, but I will still root for them in the Super Bowl if I know it's going to, like, because you want, you want them to go off on good terms, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And All right, we just so- talk about his, uh, his insurance commercials. We don't. We don't have to mention that or the chicken parm. Oh, that that is the insurance nationwide man. chicken parm. You taste so good. I um, I'm I'm thankful for those commercials still. They I, they. I, uh, I wish I still saw them. I wish they were still doing more stuff. It's like a nostalgic kind of thing for you now. Like thinking back on those commercials, Peyton Manning was like the, he was like the star of the NFL then. He was in all of them. He was in the Papa John's commercial before Papa John's uh, said some things and. Before Papa sweats. John was canceled. Before he was canceled and <laughs> yeah. sweats pizza grease. But hey, all right. I have some honorable mentions here just okay, before yeah. we wrap this up. Um, Gronk, because when he retired, it was pretty crazy, even though then he came back. Right. But um, then I, I also have Joe Thomas because he was the one of the best O-linemen like, of our lifetime. And he didn't miss like a single snap, I want to say, for like, 10 seasons and then and retired impressive. it is it is impressive and then retired and the browns got immediately good right after he retired so <laughs> he spent a whole career like on the winless browns you know I, I i feel really bad for him and he was he was really good for sure i would say one honorable mentor for me is jerry rice oh yeah he was definitely a very like influential player oh yeah absolutely and he could I have just, broken so many more records too if he played longer. Same with uh, Barry Sanders. For sure, yeah. They could and, have um, set records for eternity. Exactly. Well, that's our show. Sorry to leave it on kind of a <laughs> nostalgic, depressing note, but we'll try harder next time, I guess. I don't know. Hey, no, yeah, it's not not depressing. It's it's good we, to remember uh, these people. Yeah, definitely. It's always good to look back to the vets. Us. Exactly. Oh, and uh, Brennan, I think we should share our exciting news for next week. Um, we will officially be in studio. Oh yeah, that is true. You will see our faces on camera and we will all just look awesome. And Probably sound a little is, better too. It's going to be so crisp, dude. I'm looking forward to it so hard. Like it's going to be, Oh my God, don't even get me started. But, um, yeah, so, and we're officially on YouTube also. So spicing things up podcast and our email is spicing things up podcast at gmail.com. If you guys want to send us anything, um, I haven't seen any memes in a while, so that'd be pretty cool if we got some more. <laughs> also, again, the cover art option is still up. So, um, yeah, Brennan, that's our show. We'll see these people next Tuesday, right? Yep. We will see you guys later. All right. Bye. That thing bleeding to the, you know what I mean? Walkie slash. That thing bleeding, Pete.